Welcome back to the Investor Coaching TV show. Diversification. Why do we diversify? What should we diversify against? Are there different things that we ought to think about at different ages when it comes to diversification? Actually, yes. The answer is yes to both of those questions. So let's talk a little bit about this. There's an interesting concept, you know, when it comes to planning our financial future and thinking about our financial future and, and planning various aspects of diversification that I want to run by you. And it's shown by this graph right here. You see this kind of, isn't it pretty? Actually, this, this graph shows different types of things that we diversify against. And one of them is human capital. The other one is financial assets. Now, that's going to change as we age. And let me explain why, what I'm talking about right here. What does this mean to you? Well, investment diversification. This may come as a shock to you that I'm going to tell you that investment diversification is not that important when you're younger. Why? I'm, well, think about it. What is your value when you're younger? Where, where is most of your value? It's in your ability to earn an income, what we call human capital. Let's say I've got a, a very young person and we're trying to figure out what their value on paper is. Well, I'm going to add up two things. I'm going to look at their human capital, their ability to earn an income into the future. So I'm going to take all their future earnings and I'm going to bring it back to the present value and say, what's that worth? on paper right now. And that number may be $705,000. Let's, let's use that as an example. Now their capital, in other words, their investments, the money that they've set aside from income that they've earned, may be minuscule, maybe only $4,000. Well, who really cares if I have a $4,000 investment if it's diversified? Where's most of my value? It's in my ability to earn an income. Well, how do I diversify that? Well, let's take a look at that. A young person should focus mainly on protecting their human capital. That if you're younger and you're watching this TV show, or if you've got kids and you know maybe that they're, they've just gotten into the work world, pay attention. This is what you need to focus on. Number one, they ought to have life insurance, especially if they have a young family, because your ability to earn an income discontinues if you're no longer around, obviously. Another thing that people overlook more often than they really should is disability. What if I can't work? What if I'm sick? What if I'm hurt? What if I'm injured and I can no longer go to work? Or maybe mentally I cannot do what I used to do. That's a living death because now I can't support my family, but I also can't support me. So disability insurance is tremendously important, especially when you're younger. Health insurance, you got to pay the doctors, you got to pay the hospitals if you're sick or hurt. Got to make sure that you've handled that. Another thing that I want you to think about, especially you younger people, is acquire new skills. Always be thinking about how to improve yourself in this economy. Think about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, a lot of the jobs that are hot today didn't even exist. So if you're one of these people that your skill level is dropping because you're no longer getting new skill education or learning new things, your value is becoming less and less. And especially when you're younger, you've got to diversify in this particular aspect of your being. So let me tell you a personal example, matter of fact, because this is really important to me. I was actually a valedictorian to one of the local colleges for their commencement you know, their graduation commencement. And this is something I talked about a lot because when I got out of college, I thought I'm going to make a resolution that every year I'm going to learn something new. And for the most part, every single year I've been out of college, I've done that. Now, basically what I did is I said, okay, number one, I'm going to get my series six, my license. I'm going to get series seven, series 63. I got life, health, disability license. I became a chartered financial consultant, a chartered life underwriter, a life underwriter training council fellow. I became a, an accredited asset management specialist, a lot of different designations. And every step of the way, what that has done is that has increased my value to my clients. I'm going to urge you to do the same thing in your industry. It's tremendously important. And and you won't be sorry that you did it, especially down the road when things start to change in our world. Let's say we take a, a typical example. Let's say I've got a 22 year old and I say, well, okay, what do these numbers look like on paper? Well, that person may have a human capital value at that point in time in their life of $705,000. 
Now their financial assets may be nothing, so their total value is $705,000. At age 32, now all of a sudden their human capital value might be more because now they've got experience. Now they're worth more to their employer. Maybe that value is $870,000, and they start building up little assets here, $62,000. So their total value is about $932,000. Age 42, they may max out. Now they're worth a million dollars in the workplace and they've got $206,000. Now you see how this is starting to shift and it's going from one to another? That's the point. As you get older, what's going on? Now you've got more financial assets. As, you're young, as you get older, your value in the marketplace or your ability to earn future income goes down. And that's what I always tell people. We go through two phases in life. One is where we work for money. The other is where money works for us. Now, as we age, what happens? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to start focusing more on the diversification, not in our skills and all of that, but more in our investments. We've got to look at making sure we protect ourselves against market risk. So add more bonds. Don't get rid of, of stocks, but just start to add more bonds and decrease the stock holdings. Make sure you've got a really good focus on U.S. versus international diversification. Hey, guess what? U.S. is not going to be the only game in town, and it's continuing to be less a part of the game as time goes on. Also, diversify between small and large companies. A big mistake that older investors make is they walk away from small companies. It can be, the, it can be some of the best diversifiers as you get older when it comes down to it. And also value versus growth. Diversify between those two. And another thing I don't want to de-emphasize, I can't overemphasize this, dollar devaluation risk. I kind of get tired of people talking about, you know, protect yourself against inflation. That's meaningless. Think of it this way, dollar devaluation. Your dollar keeps purchasing less and less stuff as time goes on. You can't walk away from that. You've got to make sure that you protect yourself against the dollar going down in value. One of my old professors actually said it at a meeting a few months ago. I asked him, what's his biggest fear? You know what he said? That the Fed gets it wrong. If they get it wrong, all of you investors that are focusing most of your attention on fixed investments are going to be real sorry. Now, how do we practically use this stuff? Well, here's a chart that's kind of cool to take a look at. Here's some of the latest thinking on how much you should have in stocks versus bonds as you age. Let me show you how to read this chart. If you're a conservative investor, let's say, and you have a tax deferred portfolio like an IRA or a 401k plan, you might take the number 115 minus your age and that will give you an idea of what you might want to have in stocks versus bonds. I'm going to give you an example in just a second. Now notice that the number is higher for a non-qualified portfolio. It's for tax reasons. I won't get into that today, but that's the reason. 125 minus the client's age. In other words, what happens, stocks are more efficient in a taxable portfolio. If I'm a moderate investor, I take 128 minus your age, or 138 minus your age in a non-qualified portfolio, and aggressive, it's 140 versus 150. So let's take a, a, a quick example here. Let's say I've got a 65-year-old. They're a moderate investor in a non-qualified portfolio. I'm going to go over here to 138 minus the person's age, 65, 138 minus 65 equals 73 percent. That tells me how much I should have in stocks. Now those of you investors that are saying, whoa, the stock market scares me, that's surprising. Realize that you may not be as familiar or may not be giving as much credit to the risk of inflation as you ought to be because stocks tend to be the only thing that really protect you against the devaluation of the dollar. So I'll tell you what, after this break, I'm going to work more on your mind. I'm going to play some mind games with you. I'm going to talk about your mental thinking regarding investing and how that stinking thinking can cause you to make some really serious mistakes in the years going forward. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this on the Investor Coaching TV show.